I make no apology. Hashtag avgeeks all around the world. Join in. In around half an hour, the very last Boeing 747 will be rolled out and delivered to Atlas Airlines. It's a freighter. The plane's expected to be delivered after a ceremony. There are thousands of people in there, uh, past and present workers, executives. Um, for the geeks, it is the 1574th, 1574th 747, the real Boeing, the jumbo jet, to be delivered. Now, it was a double-decker plane that revolutionised air travel. It became known as the Queen of the Skies. There was only one, the 747. From the moment the 747 rolled out in 1968, flyers have been in love with the jumbo jet. It was a plane that nearly bankrupted Boeing and Pan Am. Both companies bet the lot that it would be a success. And what a success. Its first flight from New York to London ushered in a new golden era of travel. When passengers still dressed up to fly, the 747 was the pinnacle. The spiral staircase leading to that famous upper deck with lounges for first class. You weren't a global airline if you didn't have the 747 in your fleet. And so it was for more than four decades. Boeing tried to breathe new life into the plane with the 747-8 Intercontinental. But only a few airlines bought it and the plane's days were numbered as more fuel-efficient twin jets, 777s, A350s took over. Boeing announced the end of production and airlines like Singapore and United, with great ceremony, removed the jumbos from their fleet. My first 747 flight was People's Express in 1983, from Gatwick to Newark. I now know that my last was in December 2019. British Airways, Heathrow to JFK. I've always loved the 747. I still take pictures of them when I see them at airports. It's been a three-decade love affair with the Queen of the Skies. Now, the death of the great planes, the jumbos, may be greatly exaggerated. Some airlines are, in fact, bringing them back into service. Etihad is reviving its A380s this summer, two years after grounding them indefinitely. We don't think the residents will still be on them. And it's not the only one. Ten carriers, including British Airways, Qantas, Lufthansa, are going to fly them because they need the extra premium seats. They need the lift. They need the capacity. Brian Summers is the editor of the Airline Observer. He joins me from uh, California. First of all, we, before we get to um, the, uh, the 380s, the 747, I mean, it was just, it, there's nothing like it. It's the end of an era, Richard. Uh, 50 plus years. It's sad to see this today. But as you say, to a lot of us aviation geeks, the real 747 was the Dash 400. We haven't seen those in a while. The ones that are flying now, about 10 years old, the 747 Dash 800 or Dash 8, as they say, we'll see them for a while longer. Uh, but it's not as exciting to get on them anyways. OK, are you old enough to remember the classic with the spiral staircase? Richard, I have to say that I am not. Uh, the oh. first ones that I remember uh, were, the, were the 400. Uh, the classic with the spell stickers. Now, back to the, the newer, uh, the 380s. Um, they need them. The airline, I mean, uh, the airlines have bringing them back. BA's flying the full load, or, or almost. Uh, Qatar obviously needs them for, because of its 350 problems. But airlines need these planes. Why? Well, three years ago, a lot of airlines panicked. There was absolutely no business coming in. They were hemorrhaging cash. And they said, we can't do this anymore. We have to park these airplanes. And I think they got a little ahead of themselves. And some of these airlines said, we will never fly them again. The economics weren't great even before 2020. But now, fast forward three years, everybody wants to fly. It's going to be a huge summer in Europe and the United States. And as you say, airlines need the lift. So the economics aren't great on the airplanes, but if you fill them and if you use them at big airports, you know, like London Heathrow and uh, Frankfurt, they work. They work for an airline. So I'm not surprised to see them back. 
Do you think airlines are regretting losing the 400s? BA parked them all off. Air France, they all sent the 400s off. I'm not sure that they regret the 400s. You know, one thing that you hear about in this business is that as these airplanes get retired, there are fewer parts available. There are fewer maintenance people in areas of the world that can work on them. So you send a 747-400 maybe to Johannesburg, and it breaks, and there's nobody around to fix it, or there's no parts available. We saw this with the MD-80 in the United States. Sometimes it is just time for all these airplanes to get retired. The A380 is a different story. It's only 10, 15 year old technology. And the idea, so Tim uh, Clark at, at Emirates has said what really, and of course he's got over 100 of them, so he would say that. He said basically what really needs to happen with the 380 is that it needs to be re-engined in the same way that the Neos on the, uh, the 20 and on the 30 have been done. But I can't see anybody ever agreeing to do that either. There seems like there's absolutely no appetite to re-engine the A380. You know, Emirates is the only big customer for that airplane. It's going to sunset at some point in the next 10 to 20 years. And you can have me uh, back on in old age and we can say how sad we are. I look forward to that day. If I'm still here, uh, in, in the, you'll be still going strong. And um, on this question of big planes, the 777-10 or 777-X is, is delayed. So Boeing really do, only has the 300s and the 200s, 777s, in terms of big lift capacity. Airbus has its 350 for big lift, 350,900. 350, um, but nobody really has the, the very large lift anymore. No, nobody does. You know, the U.S. airlines decided that they didn't want the big lift several years ago. They're big in terms of frequency. So, you know, Richard, when you go to London, you don't want to wait for the big 500-seat airplane. You want the option to fly every single hour. And the best way to do that yeah. is with smaller, more efficient airplanes. And then the other thing is, when I fly somewhere, uh, if I don't want frequency, I want to fly nonstop. I don't want to, uh, you know, switch planes, fly from L.A. to Tokyo and switch planes and go to Singapore. I want to fly from L.A. to Singapore, what they call a more thin route. That requires a smaller airplane. So big airplanes have fallen out of favor. But as you know, Richard, there are cycles in the industry. Things yeah. fall out of favor. So and then one day people wake up and they say, we need big again. So this morning I flew back from London. I was in London yesterday. Flew back this morning. Um, I was on a United 76. They were very clever the way they kept their 76s for the post-pandemic flight. But interestingly, we're in that low part of the year. I think there was only about 40 of us on the aircraft in total, um, which is unusual. But it's just that sweet spot of the month, in a sense, for passengers when Christmas is over and before Easter. Exactly. You know, uh, airlines in Europe and the United States are saying that there are very few trough periods between uh, Europe and the United States now. There used to be a lot of periods during the year where very few people were traveling. Now uh, the tourist season has expanded into the spring, into the fall. But you're right, uh, late January, early February, you don't see a lot of tourists and there just isn't the business travel anymore to make up for that. Good to see you, Brian. We'll talk more, and certainly we'll talk more than, than until they retire uh, the 380s in 20 or 20 odd years' time. Good to see you. You're looking well. Thank you. And that's